can be only one. Highlander and the Anunnaki. How's everyone doing? Today I will talk about one of my favorite franchises and characters, the immortals, gods on earth, fighting among themselves through eternity until the gathering. Highlander. Highlander is a 1986 fantasy action adventure film directed by Russell Mulcahy and based on a story by Gregory Whedon. It stars Christopher Lambert, Roxanne Hart, Clancy Brown and Sean Connery. The film chronicles the climax of an age-old war between Immortals warriors depicted through interwoman past and present-day storylines. Connor MacLeod is born in the Scottish Highlands in the 16th century. After reviving from a fatal wound, MacLeod is found by a swordsman called Ramirez, who explains they and others were born immortal, invincible, unless beheaded. Immortals wage a secret war, fighting each other until the last few remaining will meet at the gathering to fight for the prize. In 1985, the gathering is finally happening in New York City and MacLeod must make sure the prize is not won by the oldest enemy, the murderous Kurgan. Highlander enjoyed little success on his initial theatrical release, grossing over 12 million worldwide against production budget of 19 million and received mixed reviews. Nevertheless, it became a cult film and inspired film sequels and television spin-offs. It is also known for songs recorded by the rock band Queen with Princess of the Universe, yes, Queen, who also worked on the soundtrack of the movie. The main song was used for the title sequence in the television series. The tagline, there can be only one, has carried on into pop culture. I can go in depth to talk about the movies and how confusing the timeline was for many of us. As a fan, I cannot lie, it was frustrating at times. But for me personally, the first movie was the best. And many agreed that due to the poor marketing campaign, the first movie was not as successful as it should. But time proof, the movie was worthy and is considered by many as a true classic. I am personally a fan and I have figures, comics, movies, animated series and even the soundtrack. So what are the aspects from the mythology of Highlander that should grab our attention? Were they really unearthed godlike warriors from another dimension or planet that appear to be mortals and fight it among themselves for the prize or may I say instead power? If they existed. Who are they? In order to find out, we need to go back to an old land, and that land is Sumer. Sumer is the earliest known civilization in the historical region of southern Mesopotamia, now southern Iraq. The most important archaeological discoveries in Sumer are a large number of clay tablets written in cuneiform script. Sumerian's writings is considered to be a great milestone in the development of humanity's ability to not only create historical records, but also in creating pieces of literature, both in the form of poetic epics and stories, as well as prayers and laws. Living along the valleys of the Tigris and Euphrates, Sumerian's farmers grew an abundance of grains and other crops. The earliest texts come from the cities of Uruk and date between 3500 and 3000 BC. We owe the Sumerians many things in the fields of medicines, art, law, mathematics, transportation and even entertainment. Believe it or not, the game of checkers was first seen in summer and was played by the people around 2500 BC. The list is infinite. But then how? Do we explain a civilization suddenly showing up with all these achievements all of a sudden? Well, there's an explanation, and precisely, the clay tablets provide that answer. 
The explanation has more to do with our origins on Earth and are considered the source material for ancient sacred texts currently held as the foundations of our current religion. The accounts offer a version of history that some prefer to hide, but since this channel we try to explore precisely the occult, I will do my best to provide a version of what they recorded. The Anunnaki, which according to the Sumerians means those who came down from the heavens, are said to be creators of modern-day humans. This theory, as crazy that may sound, could explain why so many researchers believe that humans coming from apes does not make any sense, especially since they keep looking for that missing link that could confirm that theory. According to the translations of author and researcher Zakaria Sitchin, the initial exploratory mission on Earth expanded into a full-fledged mission where the so-called Anunnaki established operating centers on Earth, the Moon, and even Mars. Eventually, the Anunnaki were short of manpower, so they employed genetic engineering to fashion primitive workers aka Homo sapiens. Firstly, let's understand who the Anunnaki were. The Anunnaki are described as tall white aliens, white skin, blonde hair and blue eyes in some depictions. They came to air looking for gold, monoatomic gold, which was the only natural form of metal that has a state where 100% energy is equal to 100% energy out. They needed the metal to protect the atmosphere of their planet called Nibiru. When they came here, they worked for several years retrieving the precious material in Africa, where precisely archaeologists have found thousands of ancient gold mines discovered over the past 500 years, which points to a banished civilization that lived and dug for gold in this part of the world for thousands of years. They found a human-like creature with physical traits to dig but weren't smart enough to follow orders. So the Anunnaki running out of resources to work due to the unsettlement of many Anunnaki tired of doing the hard work noted that by altering the genes of the creatures they were able to take orders and dig and therefore help them in the hard manual labor. This is why humans have an abnormal gene in their DNA this gene we have seems to be completely out of the blue. It provides us humans with intellect. Genesis 1.26 And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Numerous scholars and theologians have begun to recognize that the biblical tales of creation of Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden, the Deluge, and the Tower of Babel are in fact part of, of ancient texts written down millennia before in ancient Mesopotamia by the ancient Sumerians. So were these gods-like figures perfect? Well, they were far from perfect, and indeed, just like in modern and old tales, conflict took place. There were wars, and it got really ugly. The main fights took place between two groups, each descendants and supporters of Enki and Enil, half-brothers, sons of Anu. Enki, lord of the air and earth, guardian of the tables of destinies, and Enki, lord of the earth and water, known as Ea. An ill role in Sumerian mythology can be summed up with reference to humanity in one word, oppressor. Enki, an ill's half-brother, role can be summed up as humanity creator and champion. This might be shocking to some, especially when we notice that Enki was associated with the serpent and that the tales of Genesis regarding this animal when Adam and Eve were thrown out from the Garden of Eden, is a version of an ancient Sumerian tale which depicts 
What happened on a different way? Showing Enki or the serpent on a different light, different from what we were told. There is so much information that it will be impossible to share all of this on this video. I'll be adding in the description section some links with further information if you want to learn more. But where the Anunnaki immortals? For humans, they indeed seem to be, as their longevity compared to ours was longer. And this had an explanation according to the tablets and investigators. You see, their planet Nibiru also is located in our solar system, but its orbit takes 3,600 years, Earth years, to complete its turn around the Sun. Therefore, the Anunnaki live longer, since the equivalent of a year for us, for them, is 3,600 years. And this also takes us to the next topic, their return. When will this gathering take place? This is a very sensitive topic since this basically is based on when will the Anunnaki planet Nibiru will get close to the Earth again, when its orbit completes its turn around the Sun and near our planet. Using the records from Sumerian tablets and the information we have on regards to the orbit of Nibiru, Zakaria Sitchin, among other investigators, believe that they might have an idea. What is also worth mentioning is that in the book of Daniels, the angels tell Daniel when will the end of the days and return of God or judgment day will be. But instead they tell him that it will be after half time a time and two times, which obviously left Daniel clueless. Sir Isaac Newton on the 17th century was devoted on this topic and studied the celestial orbits, and particularly the book of Daniel, and worked on resolving the puzzle regarding the information Daniel received. When a document found handwritten by Sir Isaac Newton, he was convinced that he was able to figure out, finally, the date based on the book of Daniel using the zodiac and the prophecy given, which goes in line with Sitchin interpretation based on Nibiru's orbit resulting on the year 2060, when Nibiru will be close enough and the Anunnaki will gather back to earth and visit us again. Will they arrive in peace or instead will want to regain what they believe belongs to them? How will the earth atmosphere react as this planet gets closer? Those my friends are the questions we need to ask ourselves when the immortal gods will return and the gathering takes place for the prize and maybe at the end there will be only one race i hope you like this video my friends i want to thank you for your supporting my content please don't forget to subscribe like and share there are many other videos i uploaded on my channel and i wish you all the best please take care be safe and remember love is the law 93 Bye-bye.